is now in his fourth season as a Cubs television analyst alongside Len Casper. He is Jim Deshays calling in from Chicago, Illinois. How are you, Jim? I'm well, Rich. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining the broadcast here on a day that uh, baseball, you know, now has a second day in a row of, of having, I guess, the entire national media focused on it with no hoops, no hockey, no nothing else except uh, Major League Baseball. So the Cubs are now, I think, becoming more into a rack focus for the national media. How good is this team based on uh, what you have seen as a major leaguer and also in many, many years as a, a television analyst, Jim? Yeah, um, about as good as it gets. Um, all phases. You know, starting pitching has been outstanding. The bullpen uh, has not obviously been overworked because the starters have been so good. Um all kinds of power up and down the lineup. They score a ton of runs. And uh, you look at the advanced metrics, and uh, defensively, uh, they're the best team in baseball as well. So there's no real uh, discernible weakness on this club. And, uh, you know, they've got Joe Madden, who's one of the best managers in baseball as well. Well, in terms of Madden, um, he might be the antidote to what normally might make Cubs fans nervous, which is the Cubs looking so good. You know where I'm going with that one, Jim, where you've got, you know, a Cleveland city that just saw the Cavs exercise some ghosts. How nervous are Cubs fans? (laughs) Yeah, well, yeah, there there is that element of of Cubs fandom where you're always peeking around the corner to see what what, what calamity lies ahead. Um, And the great thing about Joe is from the first day he was managed, he embraced that. You know, he didn't try to run and hide. He didn't say, you know, there's no such thing as a curse. He said, yeah, it's been, it's been a tough go here. It's been a rough century, but uh, we're good. You know, we're just going to have fun and go out and play. Um, so, so you're right. I, I think when, when Theo and Jed hired Joe, um, you know, they saw it as, you know, an opportunity to get a guy who's a perfect fit for a young ascending ball club. Um, you know, Ricky Renteria, who was the manager before Joe, was only here a year, and, and Ricky did a fine job. And uh, I hope he gets a job somewhere else. I think he'll be a good league, a uh, good big league manager. But when you have a chance to get a guy like Madden, uh, you know, given where all the other pieces were in the organization with the young players on the rise, uh, it, it looked to be a, a perfect fit, and it has proven to be a perfect fit. Who is the best player on this team? Do you think, Jim? <laughs> Man, that's tough. You know, I, I nicknamed Anthony Rizzo um, Eggs in spring training because you know it, it, it was using the metaphor was was an omelet because you know there's so many other pieces but he's kind of the main the main part of the dish um, but that's that's a tough argument because Chris Bryant has been so good his versatility his ability to move from third base to the outfield has allowed Joe to tinker with his lineup um, and the thing about Bryant he's really good against both right and left handed pitching Anthony has struggled some this year against lefties. Um, but, but, you know, but for me, you know, I, I probably still have to say Rizzo's the best player and uh, and Bryant's 1A. Now, having said that, the two guys that have probably played the best are Dexter Fowler and Ben Zobrist. Yeah, and, and Zobrist, I mean, is a guy that, that Madden knows from, from back in the days uh, in, in Tampa. And you have to wonder how much um, – how, how he – has added to this mix and has helped gel the whole thing together, Jim, right? Yeah, uh, he's, he's, he's been a big piece, Rich, um, because, you know, th- this was a really good team last year. They won 97 games, but uh, it was a team that struck out a lot, um, and that's something Zobrist doesn't do. So he adds that element of, of, a, of a tough, you know, grind it out at bat. Uh, we'll see a lot of pitches, takes walks. He walks more than he strikes out. You know, very few guys in the game do that. Um so and and, he, and he, he has power too, and he drives the ball. So he's a, an ideal leadoff hitter because of the on base skill set. Um, but he's also a guy you can hit in the middle of the order and drive in runs. Um, and it just makes the whole lineup that much better to have you know that kind of a quality hitter. With Fowler being on the 15 day DL though, does that just mean one of the zillion AAA Iowa guys that have been brought up in the last several months are going to be the one stepping in the void here? Jim? Yeah, last night it was Albert Elmore Jr., and he's made a real good impression. Uh, first coming to the big leagues on our last road trip. Uh, he's gotten some big hits. He's a tremendous defensive player, so you don't lose anything at all defensively with Elmore, um, no matter where you play him in the outfield. Um, you know, and, as, and as, you know, hopefully it's just 15 days and, and back at it for Fowler um, because he would be very difficult to replace um, with his on-base presence at the top of the order. He's probably been the best leadoff guy in the game this year. 
Um, but yeah, they just keep, you know, churning out these young position players and, uh, they just called up this kid, Wilson Contreras, the catcher, hit a home run in the first pitch you saw the other <laughs> night. Right. Um, you know, it's just, it's just it's, one after another. And, and you think yeah. when Schwarber goes down in the first two weeks of the season, Jim, that, that's that's just the trap door that all Cubs fans are expecting to open up on them, and yet there's still 26 games above 500 right now. What is the weakness? If there's one weakness on this team, as you know, when October hits, usually those weaknesses get exploited or they come to the fore. What What might it be? I don't know if I would characterize it as a weakness, but I think the one area they would be looking to upgrade would, would be another arm in the bullpen. Um, you know, kind of that, if, if, you're, if you're in go for it, win it all mode, you do your due diligence and you try to say, well, how can we get, you know, this phase of our game is good, but how can we make it a little bit better? So, you know, I, I think a, a power arm in the bullpen, uh, swing and miss lefty, would be would be a real good fit because you, you you do start to play the game. Okay, what is the postseason going to look like uh, if we've got a you know a big situation late and Bryce Harper's in the batter's box or Brandon Belt or, you know and, and Travis Wood uh, left out of bullpen has been good, uh, but I think you would want you know more of a dominating arm uh, just to help bolster the back of that bullpen. Jim Deshays, Cubs broadcaster here on the Rich Eisen Show, and Arietta and Lester and the whole crew, Hamill. Everybody has been just outstanding. And how how good is Arietta? I mean, is he the best? Well, you he's, have you know, seen? He's, he's in the conversation, has been for a couple of years. What Kershaw is doing is, is just insane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you know, for a while there was like whichever one of those two guys pitched last was the best pitcher in baseball. Because, mm-hmm. you know, Arietta would do his thing and go, oh, my goodness, this guy's unbelievable. He's had more no hitters and losses in the last calendar year. And, and you thought, well, nobody can can beat that. And then two days later, Kershaw would make a start, and you go, oh, by the way, this guy's you know punched out 150 and walked two or whatever the you know the silly numbers are. Um, so you you make the case for Kershaw, but um, I don't I don't think that's a winnable argument. Um, they're just you know those, those two guys at the head of the class. And um, we're talking about comebacks these days, Jim. Right? How the Cavs just came back and and won it all. Uh, and how people are overcoming adversity. In terms of comebacks, uh, how would you rate me, Mariucci, and Melissa Stark singing the seventh inning stretch uh, oh, from this year compared man. to yeah, last you know, to, to be out for, for a full year and to step up there and perform the way you did, yeah, uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I'm, I, would, I would rate you guys mm. uh, somewhere in yeah. the top probably 100 that I've seen do it. Top 100? <laughs> Top 100. I'll take that because I think we had to have been in the bottom 100 two years well, ago. I, the, the whole key is as long as you, if you do it with gusto, yes, uh, and zeal. You know, if you don't, it, it doesn't really matter how you sound. It's all about it's all about attitude. And when you say zeal, you're not talking Todd, right? Jim? Not talking Todd. No. Okay. Very good. And who is the worst? The one where you just said, "Oh my God." What was that? Oh, all about? That's, yeah, I don't know that anybody stands above the rest. Oh, come that's on. Karma, uh, and because there have been plenty of times, uh, what I typically do is I'll, I'm sitting there just, as you know, just kind of the right of the singer or singers. Mm-hmm. And, and usually I'll cast my eyes over at our um, fine media relations director, Peter Chase, and we'll just kind of roll our eyes um, when, when, we have, when we have a really bad one. And, and that happens a lot. Um, you know, I wasn't here for Ditka. I know that's, uh, that performance was kind of legendary. Um, <laughs> yes. We had we had a guy this year, and his name escapes me. He's a rap artist. Yeah, who is who, uh, who, the, the guy who came and didn't know the words? Yeah. Right? That wasn't, yeah, and I, I, I apologize because I can't remember who it was, but that, that, that one, that one was, was pretty ugly. Well, Jim, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. We'll get you back in uh, as uh, things progress towards uh, deeper into the summer, okay? Absolutely, Rich. Good to be with you, man. You got it. That's Jim Deshays, Cubs broadcaster here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.